Nora Parham, is the only woman known to have been executed, in Belize. Nora was the first and only woman in the record books to have suffered death at the gallows in Belize. She was hanged for the murder of her partner, Ketchel Trap. He died in a fire incident. Belize at that time was under British rule. Under the British laws she was found guilty and sentenced to die. Nora, an Asian, was 36 years old when she was executed. She was of South Asian ancestry, and cut a diminutive figure, standing 4 feet 8 inches and weighing 115 pounds. She was originally from Punta Gorda, but later moved to Orange Walk Town. Parham had eight children, one of whom was born in prison. Her first four children had been fathered by her estranged husband, Parham while the father of the others was Ketchel Raymond Trapp, a constable in the British Honduras police force. Trapp had a reputation for drunkenness and domestic violence, and Parham had frequently complained to police about his behavior. She was said to have complained several times to the police about Trapp's violent behavior. Although the jury at her trial recommended mercy, the British governor of the colony, then called British Honduras, declined to interfere with the verdict. A domestic violence victim, hanged for murdering her batterer, who just happened to be a cop, Parham remains a lively source of controversy down to the present day. Nora's position as the victim in an abusive marriage combined with serious doubt about whether she truly killed her husband at all, have given her enduring appeal. There's a going campaign to issue her a posthumous pardon. In fact, there was a going campaign before she died to issue her a humus pardon, opposed by a governing party paper on the ground that sympathy ought not change court rulings. And it's hard not to feel sympathy for Nora Parham and the years of beatings she's reported to have endured in her relationship with Ketchel Trap. One doubts even the harshest magistrate would condemn a person in her situation to hang today. By refusing to treat the pair as wife and husband, not just cop slayer and cop, argues this volume on gender politics in colonized bellies. The government deepened its own highly political silence about domestic and community gender oppression and violence and added a threatening element to its recall to domestic womanhood. But many believe, as Parham testified at her trial that it wasn't homicide at all, that Trap was incidentally splattered with gasoline during his Donnybrook with his wife then carelessly set himself ablaze lighting a cigarette while off in the outhouse. While he came back in the bedroom, I had a gasoline iron in my hand with a pan of gasoline. He came in the bedroom with a stick in his hand and hit me on my head. When he was going to hit me another hit, I threw the gasoline on him and he grabbed away the pan from me and I went through the back door and he stoned me with the said pan. After he stoned me, I ran around the house and he never see where I got to. I went in the house through the front door, then I took the gasoline iron from where I left it and put it in the box. While I was inside I heard a noise and I ran to see what it was. When I went I saw Ketchel Trap come out of the latrine under fire. I then run up to help him but I see I could not, then I continued running towards the hospital back street, running towards the station. He was doused with gasoline and set a fire, but admitted as he expired from these ghastly injuries that he had been beating Parham before the fatal fire. Even so. It sounds like a calculated way to kill a person. On the 5th of June, 1963, Nora Parham was executed by hanging. 
She walked to the gallows with no fear. According to witnesses she embraced herself with dignity and winning walked to the gallows with no aid or force. While the deaths of Trapp and Parham were tragedies in themselves, what continues to weigh down on the hearts of those who hear the story is the deeper effect the tragedies have had on the lives of Nora's eight surviving children who grew up without one or both of their parents and some of whose lives remained largely disconnected because they ended up being raised in separate homes. They are still yearning for the full story to be put in its proper and truthful context in a way that will bring closure once and for all. More than that, there is the broader hope the Nora Trap story will inspire positive change in a community still overwhelmed with too many instances too many fatal instances, of domestic violence, where love between spouses should instead prevail. She went running for help, and that is not the action of a killer, yet she was executed in the end, even though there were no eyewitnesses to prove that she did lock trap up and light the match. Over the years there was one constant eyewitness, Panita Espeyo who was present when Trapp gave his statement to police from his hospital bed in Orange Walk. She has always been adamant that Trapp on his dying bed told police that he lit the cigarette while he was in the outhouse and that's when the fire started. However, she heard a different version read at court and protested the change, but was ignored. That makes sense especially since he was a known smoker and it was not unusual for men to sit in the outhouse, located in the backyard, to relieve their bodily needs, while taking a smoke. From the evidence we could unearth in the archives, this case would have been decided differently, and Nora would not have been found guilty, however, even so many years later, her sons have not given hope that their mother can be vindicated posthumously. Thank you for watching Death Row.